They guy dressed about catching up with the fans like it's been a real effort yeah, to yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we managed to track down yeah. these people we must do it more <laughs> often we only see each other every time a new Harry Potter book comes yeah. out it's terrible isn't it I know I know we should really meet under better circumstances yeah, yeah. I only ever see you when you're waving desperately at the cameras outside Blackwell Blue yeah yeah we yeah. were, we were that's discussing that's shows where they just go through the front of newspapers mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's, it's sort of it's weirdly boring isn't it it's mm. also like uh, I mean newspapers themselves seem quite old fashioned now the idea of someone actually having them in the office uh, in the studio and like lifting them up yeah. and stuff like that mm. I've got these sheaves of paper let's yeah. look at them yeah uh-huh. a, a gentleman has brought the, yeah. the broadsides yeah. yeah 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 because it's all printed it's definitely out of date we know that yeah, yeah. yeah. let's see about it well it's really, I can't really remember any details of going through the front pages now, but I feel like did they only do like the the sort of the more reputable news? Because it'd be very funny someone on the BBC had to be like, oh, and the Daily Mail's gone with our gypsy is lowering your house price. Well, it's, it's very interesting. It'd be, it'd be funny to, on the BBC. It's like yes, and now the uh, the Daily Sport. Uh, <laughs> yes, we can't show this paper. <laughs> they do that thing where it's like uh, they <laughs> s- they say the dumb papers at the end in this that descending voice. Where they do like like yeah. if someone shot the prime minister, they do all the front pages about that, and then they would say, "And the Daily Muck has gone for story about horses." Yeah, and then they just straight that on slow, to something else. Yeah, and then it's straight on to a new piece. <laughs> the of Daily news. Muck. It's like the, the Stable Muck. Hands magazine yeah. for mucking out. That's yeah. what it's. It started as that. <laughs> no, mucking, yeah. mucking out is their comedy section for and by Stable. It was hands. bought out by Murdoch in the eighties. Yeah, it started mm. as a Stable Hands mm. Daily. That's a real broadcaster skill. That thing of. Like communicating dislike by just uh, yeah 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 that as you say that descending voice and like this and in cricket <laughs> yeah well it's the worst is the, <laughs> the news readers on Radio Four where they say they've just had to do some stupid fucking story about nothing they go lovely <laughs> yeah and then they move on and you go oh god I'd rather you spat in my face it's than- when you can you can hear the papers being moved after uh, they've made yeah, the yeah. withering <laughs> well, here's the other thing though that has not happened in any other country but this one no country no. in the world is like well time to read you the paper children yeah it's mm. it's so sort of oddly old fashioned people that a weird number of people are still reassured by the actual by the actual newspaper the like, thing. yeah, mm, yeah. News. I see in the newspaper it's mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. remembering this is slightly yeah. uh, only half connected, but you remember in the, like in terms of things that you've seen a newsreader grudgingly say. Remember when uh, Blur v Oasis was a like a national a national talking point for a brief bit in the nineties, and people like Trevor McDonald would have to say the pop group Blur, and you can see him <laughs> thinking, "What the fuck are we talking about this on the nine? This is the nine o'clock news. The song Country House isn't." Yeah. <laughs> May it cause quite a stir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ants have been queuing outside. Our price is. <laughs> we we approached Liam Gallagher for comment, who referred to uh, Alex James as a stupid cunt. <laughs> yeah, we'll see also yeah. r- new, serious news shows covering queues for midnight release of Harry Potter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We caught up with some of the fans earlier today. <laughs> Queue Vox Pops with some of the maddest people they could find. Yeah. yeah, they always talk about catching up with the fans. Like it's been a real effort yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. we managed to track down yeah. these people. We must do it more often. We only see each other every time a new Harry Potter book comes yeah. out. It's terrible, isn't it? I know, I know. We should really meet under better circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I only ever see you when you're waving desperately at the cameras outside Blackwells. Yeah. yeah, that that loose wave. Yeah. Will we ever see another situation where people are queuing outside bookshops at, at midnight? I suppose that was a very. Uh, That's true. Hmm. That's all down. All downloads now. Yeah, and well, even if even if if she releases, it's difficult to imagine. No. You just well, don't get it with the well, image like, yeah, like, releases. She she, she, yeah. she has released another sort of couple of books, but they get more and more about her like sort of obsessions. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. It's, yeah. The, it's the queuing at midnight to buy an Ian McEwan for me. <laughs> They're like a guy dressed as Chesil Beach. Yeah. <laughs> he's going down, he's like, oh, no, I love the works of Ian McEwan. Yeah. I've, I've often thought the symbolism he employs is... Uh, Someone the- dressed as a sweeping look at the 20th century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a great stunt to ask someone like Watson to open just, just so you could go in and buy the... That would be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well I've, come as, a, I've <laughs> come as a precocious and mendacious eleven-year-old girl who, through <laughs> no knowing this, but sets into uh, it sets into motion a series of tragic events. Yeah, <laughs> we've all come as sort of forms of sexual trauma.
<laughs> Massive, and they said spread, spreading a rumor through the queue that they he might come and yeah yeah <laughs> he's, he's, he's in the here. queue in costume. <laughs> but everyone he's in the queue us. looks a bit like Ian McEwen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, like a, a, a Grisham novel queue, just all dads. <laughs> just yeah. it's, a, it's all people who could easily be John yeah, Grisham for yeah, you. Yeah. Like, a thousand yeah. dads in wraparound uh, shades. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think the next level from that, of course, is the queue for the midnight release of the next Lee Child Jack Reacher yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. guys queuing up in... Um, it, with like white t-shirts, cigarettes under them, yeah, all cleaning muscle cars, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just uh, British guys doing American accents. Yes. And just, mm. just one punch knocking out anybody who looks at them wrong. For someone as famous as he is, I wouldn't know Lee Child. If he came in here now and, yeah. and he spoke authoritatively on the work of Lee Child, I'd still be like, he could be. But would, I don't know, if, like, you, if you met Lee Child, would you be more or less creeped out if he was more or less like the character Jack Reacher? Because if he came in and he was like a six foot five, muscly combat man, you'd be like, oh wait, are your weird books just about you yeah. fighting people? But if he was a real mm. sort of loser. Yeah, then you'd be like, wait, is this a creepy fantasy? Which yeah, one is I think it'd worse? be worse yeah. if he was the opposite of Jack Reacher. Tiny, yeah. The thing is, yeah. like an Oxford Don, like one of those really <laughs> old, like a tiny diminutive balding man with glasses, and he's like, oh, yes. good good day, have you enjoyed my Jack Reacher novel? I suppose you're going to ask me about Mr. Yeah. Reacher, are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's quite a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm most flattered about you queuing up to, to, uh, to buy my music. One of those authors that talks about their main character as though they are like a, a slightly crazy friend of theirs. Yeah, Lee yeah. Child yeah. refuses. I think to he's even got own... a few surprises in store for yes. us. <laughs> he, he says a couple of things I don't expect in this coming book. <laughs> right, he wrote the fucking thing. You made it up. <laughs> yeah, this is from your brain. The man doesn't exist. Mm. <laughs> he refuses to own a typewriter. He writes everything on paper. Does Mr. Child? Yeah, and he, has like it, the... he has it typed out by a secretary, but he won't even yeah. be in the same room as a computer. He's a right old slave driver, Mr. Child. <laughs> Never sent an email. You were going to say what you. Does look like where you write? Well, yeah. he, he does. He's sort of he he looks a bit like Brian Cranston, but he's from yeah, he Coventry. Does. Oh, he what? Looks, yeah, he's from Coventry. I'm Coventry, Brian that's Cranston. Weird. It's, it's so, that's why I think the, the Jack Reacher novels are the the strangest bit of British American ophelia. Yeah, I didn't know he's from Coventry. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's is, it, is, is this Occidentalism, like Orientalism? But it's well, like mm. a guy from Britain has managed to create right. the perfect fictional Can we see American Lee child. It's very Cranston. He is very Cranston. He does look quite a bit like Brian Cranston. That's somehow the midpoint of between... what we were saying. He yeah. looks like Sean Locke. He does a bit. <laughs> and his real name is James Dover Grant. That's a very British James name. James Dover Grant. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves Kent. He's so British yeah. that they had to call him James Dover Grant. <laughs> He's so white. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't enough yeah. to just be called James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vera Lynn would have sang about this yeah. guy. Amazing. Do you think yeah. um, that's what it takes to create the perfect American? You need to be a bit uh, outside looking in, so like I, e.g. English. What, mm. I, what, I re what I do remember is, especially this is especially true at LSE, there is a whole sort of type of European there yeah. who has clearly spent every single day wishing that they were in the Brooks Brothers riot in 2000. Right. Who is, is just an American who dresses like they're from Martha's Vineyard, Right. They've never been to America. They speak with an American accent because they went to international school. Yeah. And they're all sort of Swedish or German or whatever and are just, they will tell you about you know, everything about the World Bank internship that they're playing. They are ultimate America booze. And yeah. I think Lee Child is sort of, has taken that one step further by, he must imagine himself as, because Jack Reacher, for those who, who might not know, is like the, the all-American man imagined by your average American the, fascist is what we have down to return Andy to. Andy McNabb. <laughs> well, he does, he solves, some people have been pointing out that he solves almost all of his problems through his largeness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for Jack, he's fucking enormous. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's in the books, he's like 6'6", six, six and has, they keep going on about the size of his hands. We need, we hands need the someone size to of dinner plug plates, this comes doorway. Up so, yeah. I just... I like, need something to eat my dinner off of. Yeah, <laughs> we wow. out of it, it can't be a plate. It has to be a human part. Yeah. yeah. Put, the, put yeah. that sizzling food on my raw yeah. hands. Three Michelin and stars. You eat. It's a, a restaurant where all of the plates are the hands of a large man. <laughs> if you yeah. think of dinner plates, that's a massive claim. I mean, I always think, do they mean mm, the palm is a yeah, dinner plate I, or the whole expanse? Yeah. They would. The sort, of, the sort of plate yeah, you get at a buffet. 
Yeah, like a smaller the, little Japanese oh. bowls, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like a Toby Carvery dinner so plate. Hands the size of finger bowls. Tiny, <laughs> chilling hands. Terrifying yeah. little hands. Yeah. <laughs> hands I, the size I, I, of children's I'd saucers. I'd read something about a Jack Reacher type figure that had weirdly tiny hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It the makes the, the force of the punch is so concentrated in one area. <laughs> Yeah, Just like a knife. You're never expecting it. You think, look at that man with his puny fist. Or you think his fist's very far away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just perspective reaching towards you. <laughs> Going Actually, straight you're through, through you're your ten feet away. Oh. I thought you were still drawing your hand back to punch me. That's my superpower, time. man. <laughs> And then being American, yeah. and my time. It's yeah. fascinating that this like seeming paradigm of super Americanness is a sixty-nine-year-old in Coventry is imagining. Lee that. Child must have an erection the whole time he's writing this, right? I hope so. I think everyone does when they're writing books. I know I do. <laughs> yeah. That's what inspiration is, isn't it? It's not I metaphorical. Do, I do it's, it it's a real. It's a real well, problem. If, if one writes with an erection, it does prevent one from getting up from one's writing table. Right, <laughs> right, sort of, right hard, edit soft. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, that's what Hemingway yeah. said. Yeah, right that's hard, what, edit left. The, 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 well, the, the ancient Persians, it was said, would have uh, always discuss a battle plan twice. Yeah. Once while they were hard and once while they were soft. Yep. If they agreed both times, they would do it. <laughs> yeah. You discuss the battle plan, then you all fuck, and yeah, then you discuss then you it again. Hey, no, that's the Greeks. All oh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's more their speed. I feel yeah. like we need to hear his voice now. Has anyone heard him talk? I I yeah. haven't. I, I, I'm I, fascinated I, by the fact that he went with the sort of nom de plume of Jack of uh, well, Lee Child. Well, there's there's yeah. a reason. There's a Wikipedia page. There's oh, okay. a reason for oh, it. Because oh, it I didn't read the reason, but it's, like, it's, an, reason. it's an ironic nickname because I'm of course a man. I'm an adult. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my name's not Lee. That's modern yeah. research. <laughs> I looked it up on Wikipedia and I didn't look at what the thing was on Wikipedia, but I'm aware it's on I saw there. the heading. There is an answer reasons to that for question. pseudonym. Yeah. And I went, oh, I read there the is book a reason. about Lee Child. Well, a Wikipedia page, well, a heading. <laughs> look, that's yeah. the level of research that goes into this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I respect yeah. it. This is not TF. Writing style. Uh, this is, oh, he'll be retiring from writing Jack Reacher and giving it to his brother, Andrew Grant, who will now, I assume, be taking the name Lee Child. Well, yeah, yeah, he's possibly yeah, under the cer- uh, who would write. I didn't finish the sentence. Who would write further books under the name Lee Child? Amazing, Lee Child is a transferable name. <laughs> it's like the Pope; they've elected yeah. a new Lee Child. Yeah, it's They're called smoke the Conclave. Yeah. 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 Cigarette out of smoke from a chimney. <laughs> chimney. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, but very odd to think of Lee Child potentially going on for generations. Uh, okay. His pen name <laughs> Lee comes from a family joke about a heard mispronunciation of the name. Of Renault's Le Car as Lee Car. Calling anything Lee became a family gag, and his daughter Ruth was Lee Child. Yeah. Uh, I was open with this. Yeah. Uh. Child places his books alphabetically on, on bookshop and library shelves between Raymond Chandler and Agatha Christie. This is a very strangely written Wikipedia page because it just goes into where Child is in the alphabet yeah. relative yeah. to other novels. There's a heading with the bookshop <laughs> tactics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All his books are printed on paper. He's very clear on that. Yeah. <laughs> He's very clear. He, he no shoes vellum. vellum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're unlucky if you're a yeah. little-known author with those so, same sort of letters. So he, he yeah. said he, he chose the name Reacher for the central character because he himself is quite tall. <laughs> okay. This guy's got a fairly root one imagination. <laughs> He's always being asked to reach things for people. Well, well, that's he... the next sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and when they were yeah. gro- going, um, going grocery shopping, his wife Jane remarked, Quote, hey, if this writing thing doesn't pan out, you could always be a reacher in a supermarket. And I thought, reacher, good name. Giving people a reach around. <laughs> it's not. No one is called reacher and no one is called child. I, I, I like the idea of a guy whose imagination means, that, like, like, all this sort of art he makes means one th- more thing. Yeah. And no more things than the one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I found myself in a branch of Sainsbury's, and I and I, I heard he was a, a tall fellow. And I heard a gentleman say to a shop assistant in the alcoholic beverages aisle, "Could you reach me that bottle of Jack?" And I thought, Thank "I you. must return to my desk." <laughs> <laughs> and a light bulb came on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. suggested I had to return to my desk. My writer's semi began to reappear, and I dropped my goods and my nectar card and made haste. In 2009, he funded 52 Jack Reacher scholarships for students at the University of Sheffield. 
What the fuck? That's funny. Yeah. I'm on the Jack Reacher scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you, just got, yeah. you smashed the dean in the face on yeah, your first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you got to do in university. Yeah, you so, yeah. you got to punch the biggest rules. guy there. You, you yeah. punch the most senior academic yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you take their professorship. Yeah. <laughs> your exam bit- is a written assessment and then a fight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you yeah. you get the Jack Reacher scholarship by fighting your way through a sort of university building of henchmen mm. to get to the dean, and then that's how you qualify. Yeah. And it's just yeah. the size of the hands that determines whether you get the scholarship yeah, or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scholarship is a very large ball. Yeah, that just, you have to sort of carry with one hand. Just, just, yeah, just as you think you've choked out the dean, the real dean walks out of a back room, just going. <laughs> But he was but a decoy. No Jack Reacher scholarship for you. You'll find there are snipers trained from all angles. You're dead. Yeah. (laughs) And just like laser dots on him. You won't be coming to the University of Sheffield this year. Do you think Wikipedia and it ruins it in the same way this like we've now found out that there's exactly one and no more layers to all of the things that this man has imagined. And if it was a painting, you'd be like, Well, what are you and you you see Michelangelo here, the cherubim in the corners of the Yes, those are angels, like in heaven. <laughs> yeah. Just one layer. You, you, right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Okay. All right. Was thinking about angels, and so he painted some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he had well, heard. Well, church, innit? It was yeah. for the church, and he had heard from the church that angels are in heaven, and that is where the church would like you to go. That, that's what <laughs> so I asked for. I'm picture. a Buddhist myself. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, but I mean, one layer of on the ceiling. So, uh, there is a recording of Lee Child's voice on his Wikipedia. Page. All right. Okay. Absolutely. It was about working out my own feelings in that book. The same thing was happening to Reacher as was happening to me. It was oh, very no. vicarious. Reacher had served it. in the U.S. Mm. Army for 13 years and then... Made him up, he didn't. In the mid-90s. And, I, and I was in the TA. Please, Lee. This didn't happen. <laughs> Lee, the man you've made up isn't real. It feels like that should be an inherent... I feel like, like Lee Child might have some kind of... I don't, some kind of like a, like a rare syndrome where he's sort of unable to sort of process... The sort of metaphor and sort of imagine. He's like, well, no, the symbolism of Jack Reacher is punching. Yeah, Jack, mm. Jack Reacher is a book about punching because punching is cool and America is great. Do you think yeah. you get trained into talking like that though? If you have enough readers and fans who kind of wish or believe that this person is real, and you don't want to ruin it, mm-hmm. and in the same way that you'd be like. You do that with like a kids book character. Oh, yeah. Like, let's, yeah. Let's just say that the very hungry caterpillar is, but you know, lives you with me. You don't yeah. want to. Yeah, he's yeah. Well, I'll let him know you, what you said. He's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what? what we're let's suggesting. just say he's got type two diabetes. He's not very well at the moment. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. What we're suggesting basically is that Lee Child and Jack Reacher are in a kind of Peter Parker Spider-Man, where it's like, yeah. I'm the only one who can write down what Jack Reacher has done. No, no, yeah. no, I think it's more of a Tyler Durden situation, where Jack okay. Reacher, like, he sincerely believes that Jack Reacher is real, but he doesn't know that Jack Reacher is him. Yeah. And he's having these psychotic episodes where he, you know, punches lots knuckles. of people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can sort of liken it to when actors are so well known for one thing that people talk to them. Like, um... Remember, what was his name? Boise and Only Fools and Horses. Oh, yeah, yeah. John, John Chalice. Chalice, yeah. He, over time, he became, like, he started, he, I'll see posters from him when I'm touring. He's, he's deceased now, but old posters. And it'd be like an evening posters, with Boise. Don't, don't come to this yeah, show. Don't, he's don't, dead. Yeah, don't come. He died several years ago, sadly. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, and he wrote several books called things like, like memoirs called like Being Boise, a bit more Boise. And there's basically a point in Chalice's life where he was 75% the character from Only Fools yeah. and Horses. I have a question. Did he ever. Um, capitalize on the pun, the Boise boisterous, you know, I would, feeling boisterous. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's like w- when he was sort of scraping the barrel a bit. <laughs> well, do you think? <laughs> do you think he felt bad about sort of the day where he went? You know what? I, this is what I do. This is what I am now. Or do you think it was like a great like? I always finally I have a. Yeah, I wonder that all the time about actors who they're just or anyone that's destined to just be known for one thing do you sort of lean into it after a bit he seemed to have he seemed quite happy to do like evenings yeah, yeah. where he was just like yeah another time i remember david jason but it must be a bit of an odd life you have to update the character of boy see uh, you ever read one of these <laughs> jack reacher novels they've got now <laughs> he, he has a spin-off sitcom that was just about that character green green grass, yes, the green, green grass. Yeah. i couldn't remember was the name but that, I knew was, you'd was know that what it was yeah it was like him and marlene moved oh. to the country from peckham I don't know, Riley's just like glazing over it. I, think, I mean, Riley will know that history is yeah. littered with 
people thinking that one guy off a sitcom should yeah. have his own sitcom. Of and course, I mean, the Joey effect. The Joey yeah, effect. Yeah, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose that's what Frasier was, wasn't it? But yeah, that, yeah. that, that works. Work. That's an anomalous yeah. example of it working, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, Joey, of course. <laughs> oh, really, Boise? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we joke. Yeah. That, that is what's happened with uh, fucking Rodney. Oh, yeah. Like, the, oh, the fuck world, yeah. That's <laughs> real. You've made up a real oh, thing. Oh, yeah. There is actually an Only Fools and <laughs> Horses guy, Frasier crossover now. The guy from Only Fools and Horses, Nicholas Lindhurst, is now in the rebooted Frasier, which I right. haven't seen. Doesn't make I, any sense I don't at think all. I dare to watch it. I saw it. a screenshot of, of him drinking, no, drinking no, from like a... A kind of uh, real ale half pint glass in a big armchair. Is, is he going to like be the sort of gruff salt of the earth guy who like lives with Fraser and Ballers? I think that is the general setup. Really? Is it? I, I think so he's Marty. Yeah, but I, I, I've avoided finding out too much about the the new you life of Fraser for yourself. Yeah, yeah it just, this time it, next year we'll be millionaires. <laughs> it just sort of um, we'll be yeah. sommeliers. Yeah. <laughs> This time next year will be sommeliers. Yeah, they're the doing Frasier their Master version. of Wine qualification. I think the thing about whether or not you lean into being Boise is if you, happily, is whether or not you had any notions you'd be anything else before. I suppose so, mm. yeah. There are definitely people that are just in a soap or something and they're that guy for 20 years. Oh, great. They, they must come where they think, I'll just do this the rest really? of my life. Yeah. 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 You, they, they, well, certainly it has to be the thing where it's like, well, I'm this character and so I'm, you know, Ricky on EastEnders or whoever. Right, and that's just me, and that's me for thirty years. And people see I'm gonna say, "Hey, Ricky from EastEnders," and I'm like, I just sort of turned that part of my brain off. I I love my garden, and this if lets was, me have my it, garden. If it was yeah, there, it's as simple as that. If it's, the part of the yeah. brain was there, yeah. it's just my, a very long transaction with the public where you say, <laughs> I, "I can have a garden in exchange for saying, all right, or whatever my catchphrase is." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Years, yeah. You, you will pay for my garden yeah. if I go. I'll do it directly paid by my, me doing the equivalent of a somersault every time someone <laughs> presses a button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. doing like a blue beater dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what it is. A little trick. The most powerful example of that is Barry from EastEnders, yeah. who wasn't even on EastEnders for that long. I think like we're talking like maybe ten years. Uh, character played by Sean Williamson and died by being pushed down a mediumly steep hill mm. in the early 2000s. Wasn't there someone from EastEnders was doing a Q&A or a, a pub trivia night or something at the venue where we did a live it, TF it was once? It was a karaoke night yes. hosted by him in character as Barry from EastEnders called Barryoke. Which he does. He tours it around the country. And quite rightly called karaoke. Well, well, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Karaoke with Barry would be a real missed <laughs> yeah. opportunity. Huge missed. <laughs> absolute open goal missed. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got good marketing people working on yeah. this. That much we can yeah. say. He's got brains behind it. Um, but it, but it's remarkable because a, I think they've had to sort of retire the name Barry from EastEnders because he is for all time Barry from EastEnders. But also, he is not. He's. I never see him referred to as Sean Williamson. People always refer no. to him as Barry from EastEnders, even when he's not doing a Barry from EastEnders adjacent. No. Yeah, his no. passport says Barry from EastEnders. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 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 Barry D EastEnders. Yeah. Here's something I like: when actors who have had, uh, um, like they were like a heartthrob or they were very clean cut, and they inevitably have to choose the role where they play like a horrible paedophile. Yeah, or a disgusting, <laughs> in a monster. desperate attempt to mm. to sort of go. So, Actually, I can be horrible. Yeah, yeah. And then after mm. that, they can be serious. Yeah, um, yeah. Pattinson as Batman, maybe, or or, or Good Time. As it's the horrible, the horrible paedophile Batman. Horrible paedophile Batman. <laughs> <laughs> they cut a lot of that. I fight crime apart from one crime. <laughs> apart from one, one yeah. crime that I do, <laughs> which I endorse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it balances out. Really. Yeah. 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 Is this is this Batman as written? This is Dark Batman as written by Lee Child. Yeah. Just will say, well, I fight crime except for the one that I do, making me an antihero. Do you do you think how funny would it be if you? They finally released the long list of people going to Epstein's Island, and, and on the list was just Batman. <laughs> go, Whoa, my God! Uh, <laughs> not him. Not Batman. 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 He was there to fight the crime. Bruce Wayne yeah. going to <laughs> Bruce Wayne's I, I crime. Suppose he could dress Bust oddly, away. but <laughs> <laughs> the pilot Bust should away, remember this say. one. The yeah, pilot. Yeah. There's one flight the pilot Your should remember. Your moral code is most unorthodox, sir. <laughs> yeah. I cannot understand why you draw the line at minor street fuggery, but are okay with the molestation of children. 
People well, be saying, simply, it's an old school aristocrat. Be a prime example of people be saying, I always thought there was something about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, did, he did have that cave. So be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Looking back, he got up to some funny stuff, really. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like the Jimmy Savile thing, where it's like, it seems insane now that we tolerated it for yeah. even a week. Why did mm. we let Batman do those things? We, yeah. the people who loved him. He had that weird car, all the kids loved it. They'd always, he'd park it in front of the school and they'd come and look, <laughs> wouldn't they? Spider Man was always clambering up buildings and peering in. Yeah. It's hiding in plain sight, really. Yeah, it's a super voice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Spider-Man. The pedo Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the villain point. of this movie is a child. And he's a very powerful child and he's going to destroy the universe. So in this, yeah, on this one occasion, in order to save a lot more children, what we're going to have so to do... It's the Avengers sort of trolley problem uh, right. film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, yeah. I have. I just that's what they'll say on the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <When> you, <laughs> this is the Avengers. Yeah. In a complex moral step, you yes. didn't expect the Marvel Cinematic Universe to take. A well-known philosophical riddle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, finding it uh, it is unable to continue juicing the numbers, has taken a strange turn with Philip Seymour Hoffman as the child. <laughs> I, I mean. I'd love to see if we could resurrect Philip Seymour Hoffman and have him in a Marvel movie directed by Werner Herzog. That would be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the pedophile Avengers and Boise. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of all these these guys, so I'm looking at the at this page for Sean Williamson. Mm-hmm. You know, he worked as a rep for Club 18 to 30. Yeah, like, like, it, like recently or? <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be very funny to be like in character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were, Club 18 to 30, which is for American viewers. A place that British people go to get chlamydia, basically. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. From people who work there who just have chlamydia. It's an efficient way of picking yeah. it up, yeah. It's an it's chlamydia quickly. It's a very yeah. efficient way of collecting on, like, Zante and then distributing chlamydia throughout a group and then sending them home to spread chlamydia at home. That's yeah. basically what Club 18 to 30 is. And there's a very different friendship group you can be in that has two girls in it called Zante and chlamydia, but it's from a different kind of social class. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... No, this is, uh, I I just never would have guessed, sort of, again, that this guy who's sort of famous for being sort of hapless and now sort of, Mm. you wouldn't imagine him basically as, your job is to be kind of hot, more or less. Well, the other thing he's famous for is singing songs just well enough for it to be weird. Like he'll be at he'll get he gets hired sometimes to sing a song at an event like the opening of like an event where they can't afford like Leona Lewis you know like where they they can't afford Alexandra Burke but they need Chesney someone. Chesney Hawks is unavailable. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They need they they couldn't get Chumbawamba. The Wumba were booked out. They had to get someone to sing a kind of up uplifting anthem. And there was one where he was singing at the World Bowls Championship, which was okay. occurring in the UK somewhere, and he sang something inside so strong. And it's like that's such a distillation. It's like a really good karaoke version, but it's still kind of karaoke in it. Yeah. He's not quite a singer, but he's also better than a normal man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you'd have pulled him out of the audience <laughs> and been go, like, wow. "Someone do something inside right, right. so strong, and you'll win this microwave." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You'd be yeah. like, "Fuck, that guy was good." But if it's five thousand pounds to do that, yeah, you're like, "Oh, you could have. Someone better could have done that." Him singing that at the World Bowls Championship is <laughs> like such a powerful. <laughs> it like, really is mind. You forget the song was about bowls. Yeah. <laughs> well, because a lot of bowlers, they've overcome oh. a lot of adversity. Yeah. You know, rheumatoid arthritis, gout. The more you refuse to throw the jack, yeah. is it the harder I will bowl? <laughs> <laughs> if you were there, you'd think I'm experiencing, some, experiencing something such a so powerfully. Yeah. Not How even Twee. What do I mean? Yeah, it's lay beyond Twee, words, isn't it? It's it's little bomb. England? Or? It's, yeah. That song of all songs, yeah. it does feel as if it's um, it's been through the the washing machine a few times by the yeah, time it yeah, is the yeah. anthem of and the for World him Bowl to sing it to bowls players. <laughs> yeah, hmm. if it was found, it's, does that count as found art? Something like that. Well, it, it's certainly sort of outsider art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask another. Uh, no, take this in a slightly different direction. Okay. Which is, um, Mark, you are. I, I'm I'm very glad to see another person who does this. You are someone. Who will I wonder run, what's coming. I wonder what's coming. Will run as a means of conveyance, which I enjoy. Yeah, the thing is, I, I sort of, um, I was going to say I like running. I don't even know if that's true. I, you don't exactly like it, I, but I have a, that I have sort of. Uh, there are two. There are two forces in me: the urge to go for runs, but also the, the feeling of not quite being asked to. So yeah, yeah, quite a lot of the time, having to be somewhere is what prompts me to run. But it does mean that I do. For anyone that's watching this as well as listening to it, I do quite a lot of normal 
activities in, in not dressed appropriately. I mean, you guys are just in clothes that people would wear. <laughs> and I've got a, a top on which I got at the Commonwealth Games five years ago. Mm. It's <laughs> What was your event? Uh, javelin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about it. It was only bronze. <laughs> Balls, yeah, yeah. actually. So, so did you also do the that? The weirdest part is it was Equatorial <laughs> Guinea. <laughs> you also run to I, get places. I, okay, well, sometimes. Um, I've never known you to do this. Yeah, well, I, I don't do it often. I usually okay. do it if I've been drinking. And right. there's an, and I'm sort of. <laughs> just rides off again. He's hammered. Sprinting. Yeah. 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 So, in, Fuck, getting into your trainer's vest. <laughs> Away from the police, generally. Yeah. So, the last time I did it was quite, a, quite some time ago. So, I, I live in Herringay. I was out in Islington. Um, and I sort of left. And all the Ubers were sort of, you know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. It was sort of that. I looked at the bus and I was like, oh, it's going to be 12 minutes. So, I just started walking. And I was like, I quite fancy being in bed. And so, I just started running. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I have also done that. I find um, I've got a, well, I don't know if it is an odd thing, but um, I find waiting for a bus so annoying that I yeah. like a lot of people regard it as more effort to walk or run. Obviously, but I'm almost the opposite. I find, like the it's less mental the, the innovation. The frustration, yeah, yeah. The, exactly. Innovation mm. is the word. Yeah. I find it weirdly draining to just yeah. be standing. Mm. Boredom is, is like agony. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather put myself through physical discomfort than <laughs> just stand <laughs> yeah. with nothing happening. Because you've got a blind <laughs> set. You you see that as time that you could be spent pushing yourself forward. Exactly. These eight minutes is time is money, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this bus driver is taking money out of my pocket. Yeah, that's it. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to to the bafflement of everybody else just standing and waiting. Take off running. Yeah, as if I've suddenly heard some news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, like, I, I've got that thing where animals sense earthquakes long before humans. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you why, but I have to run for exactly 20 minutes in yeah, that direction. This, now. this yeah. bus stop's going to get hit yeah. by a fucking asteroid. If you knew what I knew, you'd also be running <laughs> you'd now. Be running in the same direction as me. Not enough to walk. This is going to be bad. You gotta, yeah. But, but, I, but I, I sort of I wonder, like, what do the people at that bus, what are they thinking at that bus stop? Yeah. Just standing there. I think he, he didn't need to run a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he hasn't even looked at his phone or anything. He's just, Exactly. He, he can only have become aware by other means of something about to happen. There must be some sense, something <laughs> eldritch. He did briefly look to the horizon. <laughs> yeah. And then his head snapped around like a deer in the forest. And then I he was just gone. It, really. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was so relaxed when he was just staring at the same board of times that we were all staring at. And walking at normal pace is also is just kind of boring, isn't it? Yeah. it it's, it's, um, yes. That said, when I set off to run here from my home, I had... Um, a naive understanding of how long Mayor Street is. It's a long street. When I saw the sign, I thought, I've basically nailed this yeah. on time. But there's, there's, there's plenty of it. It's yeah. going. Yeah. Mm. You should, I mean, the worst for this is when you're in somewhere like the USA and you believe you've found the street, but there's there's another hour of the street. Mm. Yeah, still. It, oh, yeah. They live at 6,024. Yeah. They live at 4 million. And you're <laughs> yeah. 52. Yeah. Four, yeah. Four million on 20th Street. <laughs> that, that is crazy to me. When you go to America and they're like, oh yeah, my address is like 4,000 and something. This street. It's like, make a new street, cunt. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, need yeah. to be yeah. that long. Yeah. It's not necessary. You can you can change the name of the road. Like there's like one street that goes from <laughs> yeah. New York to Los Angeles, and you can live at like ten thousand and twenty nine. Yeah. Ten billion Los Angeles roads. <laughs> there, is, yeah. there is. That sounds like a, a kind of very uh, avant garde novel. It does. Yeah. Ten billion Los Angeles <laughs> roads. People, people will be like, queuing up for that. People oh, yeah. like We're live on the A one. As um, who's the author of Lincoln and the Bardo? George Saunders. George yeah. Saunders. Yeah, if you're dressed in the, up in your George Saunders costumes, yeah. you're queuing up for one billion Los Angeles roads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the road you never come to the end of. Yeah, you can yeah. sort of imagine it. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing's a, the, it's an extended metaphor for roads. Lee Child has written it. I've got my yeah. J.M. Kutzia sombrero on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ready to <laughs> ready to have my mind blown by an indistinct place and yeah. time. I'm, I'm dressed yeah. as the barbarians from Waiting for the Barbarians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JM J- J- could see as another Lee Child pseudonym. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, well, of course, I, I've, I've always enjoyed being being, being cosy, or as I call it, cutsy. And, it was and then I decided the family, to pretend to be South African. <laughs> so, um, the uh, there's a there is the, one of those streets actually does exist in Canada. Right, uh, Canadian listeners will be like, yeah, Young Street. Yo, Young, Street about Young Street. Yeah, yeah, Young yeah. Street. Yeah, goes yeah. From, it goes from the, the sort of north shore of Lake Ontario to the south shore of Lake Simcoe, which is just a, 
a gigantic, it's with multiple lake cities. Simcoe of sounds like it was it's named after a local company on one of those sponsor a lake programs. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. your name here. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful yeah. Lake Simcoe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Lake Vodafone. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we make motorcycle parts. But yeah, it's great to have our name on the lake. You know, people love the lake. They associate it with us. And they when they need a motorcycle part, like a two-stroke oil or whatever, lake, they come to us. Lake uh, Labar. There is quite a lot of untapped revenue there, lake if you think about Labar it. Labar Mobile. Lake Labar Mobile. <laughs> Well, you could call home from here. Yeah. They just beam the logo onto the lake. <laughs> yeah. There's a drowning man, we believe. He's somewhere in the R. <laughs> I, like, gotta... uh, I like when you see the Labara money transfer adverts and you look and you go, there's always a flag I'm not sure about. <laughs> yeah. You just go, who's mm. transferring money to, there's a star and a Griffin? Yeah. yeah. Where question is that? Mark. Ah, Turks and yeah, Caicos. A question, a question mark and half the flag is like dark green and the neon pink. Mm. Where the fuck is that? There are some tiny fucking countries out there. Yeah. So I, I, um, I, I play every morning with my girlfriend. We play three games. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's a pretty normal way to begin the conversation. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's a very Duolingo <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Jeden Morgen. <laughs> yeah, chaque, chaque matin. <laughs> My girlfriend finds trousers to be gauche. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend, with whom I play the three games. With whom I play the three games. Uh, my girlfriend who I have played three games with this is mine. wearing a green top yeah, yeah. Okay, my so girlfriend this... is depressed about France <laughs> so three games three games, three games. Like, like most relationships yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. they say we don't want game playing in the relationship you've never heard of the games we play mm. um, so it's a uh, there, it's it's we, it's lame to play Wordle uh, now, uh, we, but there's there's a there's <laughs> Is two. Is that what you're concerned about <laughs> with your morning fucking word game? It's gonna be cool like, word no, games. No, yeah, yeah. Wordle is not chic. We can't we can't play Wordle. Yeah. If they catch us playing Wordle, they'll never let us into the New York Times crossword. You know what it's like. <laughs> if you're seen, yes. if she, you're seen outside Wordle, it yeah. gets round. I would, she hates the New York Times crossword as well. Oh, okay. He finds it ever since one of the answers was um, Shah. P S H A W, which is sort of an, a sort of old American way of showing disdain. Like, yeah, it's sort of scoffing. It's, yeah. A, it's the noise of a deflating tire. Yeah. <laughs> I, or like a snug snug fart. Fart. I believe that's mm. the first. It's, it's the first time I've heard of someone hating a crossword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like not a specific crossword, but like having a grudge against an institutional yeah. crossword. That, that's a very yeah. unusual Those piece of your <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking New York Times crossword. Don't even look at it. <laughs> I don't mind the cartoons, but the crossword yeah. I take issue with. If it's just the cutting out of the paper yeah. every week, shielding yeah. your eyes so you can look at the cartoon without catching a bit of the crossword. <laughs> yeah. Unless it be another infuriating clue. Per- permanent marker. So anyway, all... these three games. Yeah, three games. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hercule um, Poirot being like, I detest these clues. <laughs> no, um, so now Pasha is a bit of a meme in the relationship now. Oh, okay. Uh, no, yeah. the three games. Um, one of them is New York Times Connections, which is like only connect the ah, board. Yeah. You, yep. you, of New York Times Connections, yeah. Who who's whose dad was a columnist and that's why they're now a feature writer, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Radio Four, call me. <laughs> uh, the second one uh, is uh, Tradle, where you get a kind of um, a kind of box plot of different exported goods and a total value of exports. And based on sort of your understanding of the exports of that country and its approximate economic size, you guess the country. Excuse me? What? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the autism diagnostic test. This, this, is, is, a, yeah. this isn't a newspaper game. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to be there. I've got my tradle to work on. Yes. I, or, or, or like, this, this is like the games that, um, that hyper-intelligent family play to shame Lisa Simpson. In Simpsons, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's the, here yes. are the top five Alec exports. Guinness. Guess the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fava beans. It really. Cocoa. Just, just, oh, oh, that's yeah. a lovely one. Yeah. That's basically okay. what you're describing as a West African country. Just just, just oh, imagining South American. Just imagining being at like the hair salon, like all the aunties there being like, Jane, what do you reckon the GDP of Gabon is? <laughs> yeah. you know, four numbers. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be more than Chad, can it? <laughs> Where would Surely you mind not. Flint? <laughs> Industrial Flint. So how uh, Cornwall doesn't fit. <laughs> and then, I've tried that. Okay. After connections and trade all. After yeah. connections and trade all, worldle. Yes. Uh, I've seen just that. A, yeah. a, a, a con- country. Outline of a country. So map game. I mean, I, I love a map game. Yeah, yeah. I, I really. Does it then? Does it then dramatically fill the country in in color? Do you sort of zone uh, in on like it? Like it tells M&M you how hands. many miles out yeah, you are from your first guess, right? Yes, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. I I I I like this guy, but also I I see 
So oh, wait, huge... are you thinking of GeoGuessr? No, it's World. No, they, it's World. They, they give you an, a, a, if you if you, you well, see the GeoGuessr, si- does sound like a blast, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> GeoGuessr is so much fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish we could somehow play it for this. It's not possible. Yeah. But if we could play it for this show, it'd be great. Ge- GeoGuessr is a game where they Excuse put me, you. Excuse me, Milo. Did you say GeoGuessr? No, I said you GeoGuessr. You very much put the emphasis Jogasa. on the O. GeoGuessr. 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 Um, yeah, well, that that was like w- that was what living in Russia was like was just p- c- people continually using English words, and those were the only words you didn't understand of what they'd said when you're speaking about because stress, they would say yeah. it in the most fucked up way. I remember once a guy was uh, talking to me about some kind of audio question. We were like editing a video or something, and then he kept saying like uh, like nam ponada bit pratuls. And I was like, what's a pratuls? It sounds like one of these like yeah. Latin words that they've like Slavonized. So they've and absorbed then, in. And then eventually he like sent me a screenshot of what he was working on. I was like, oh, the music editing software Pro Tools. Ah. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. Pratuls. Pratuls. Just... pratuls. pratuls. Mm. And I'm like, how is that a logical way to say that in your head? But I suppose like, if you're not seeing it as pro and tools, yeah, as two yeah. syllables. There you is could, some yeah. capitalization there that he's Prottles. he's chosen to oh, Prottles. <laughs> Prottles. <laughs> the big T is there to help you, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but maybe he thinks it's like German, where they just go, let's just capitalize the word ham today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. put some respect yeah. on its name. Yeah, yeah. 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 do that in the world. Germans yeah. and Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. We have long respected ham in this country, <laughs> <laughs> and that is what sets us apart from the French. Yeah, mm. no. well, I do find it per- perturbing. Now that sounds a fence about ham. Yeah, it's all nouns, isn't it, in German? Mm. Capitalized, but not all. But not always all of them. It's yeah, very the- hard to tell. It's much. It's it's a, it feels like one of those things where they go, well, you just know. You you yeah. You, you have to be one you of just us. Have to basically. be one of yeah. us, or like the French with the gender of things. So they just yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously, obviously that is it's a woman. <laughs> obviously, it's le table. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, the, the table has got a penis. You fucking idiot. <laughs> we have two balls on my table. <laughs> we have two toasted sandwiches. One of them is a man, and one of them is a woman. Yeah. I also, I really do like the idea of getting truck nuts on your dining table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Le table. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that's how you would teach a kid the genders of objects around the house. Just put little scrotums put little all over them. Yeah. Put little nuts all over them. <laughs> little like, objects. Like, like a Roman trying anything they could do to strengthen a wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to put dicks on it so it won't fall down. Like Covered mm. in dicks. Yeah. Portraying that- <laughs> feminine objects as emotional somehow in your house. Like, just yeah. finding ways to like really be sexist to objects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. I do like the idea, though, of uh, the 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 Roman practice of putting dicks on things to make them stronger. Because mm. to do that to a wall, what you're mm. doing is providing handholds, really. Or to mm. climb climb yeah. a wall of dicks. Ah, uh, yeah, but yeah. you'd have to become gay, and that's the trick. Oh, yeah. Well, try climbing this wall yeah. without touching, without a touching few dicks. dicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, oh, the Gallic yeah. barbarians like ah oh, foiled Damn again. <laughs> foiled by my own toxic idea of sexuality again. <laughs> uh, I would have opened the door to the oh, treasure chest. What do we chest? do now, Virgin Getterix? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Caesar has covered the wall with dicks. <laughs> well, he covered them He's invested us again. With tit-based handholds. And they were <laughs> climbed with great glee. Ah, we will cut off the penises and then the balls will become tits and then we can climb them. Drawn. Ingenious. That's, that's what happened to Romulus Augustulus. You know? they, they, the mm. barbarians finally figured out they could do that. Yeah. The Teutoburg Forest. That's they what it was. They covered all the trees with tit. Yeah. yeah. Right. The right. Germans were too busy looking at them. Mm. Um, yeah. If you want to talk about funny flags, there's no funnier flag in the Isle of Man, I think. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, what, the three legs? Three, three legs. legs. That's fun. Mm. <laughs> legs just sort of floating around. Yeah. Just hanging out. Yeah, just th- three yeah. legs sort of shaped like a windmill. It yeah. looks like Not if you, you, Sicily. Yeah. Your three legs. If you built a machine to kick footballs over and over again, like if they yeah, were on like yeah, a yeah, kind yeah, of... Yeah. Which is the Isle of Man's major contribution to... <laughs> yes, we yeah. invented yeah. The, the ball kicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. didn't really take off, but we'd really put it on a flag by then. <laughs> we sort of imagined it was going to be a bigger deal than it was. It was, it was really big for 10 years of the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like, the Industrial Revolution. Like, <laughs> that's we, a steam-powered kicker. That we, we believed it would live forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like how some countries have a Kalashnikov on their flag. The Isle yeah. of Man put yeah. the, the auto kicker. <laughs> yeah, the auto kicker. Of course, these days... If you were to kick a ball, you'd just do it yourself, rascal <laughs> uncle child. But in those days, you had the steam-powered ball kicker. They were made on the Isle of Man. Of course, we don't make anything in the British Isles anymore. But in those days, it were made on the Isle of Man. That's it. And also, like a lot of old northern men, Fred Dibner would have had a curiously strong opinion on the Isle of Man, I find. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've always been there on their holidays. Mm, when, they yeah. were chi- when they were tiny children. Oh, yeah, children. that was very believable. The Isle of Man TT, but only with steam-powered craft. 
Yeah. You get people that only ever go to one place on holiday and they just that's just their thing. They just go there forever. Yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And, it's, that... and if it's the Isle of Man, that's really perverse. It, yeah, that's a system. Because the, the weather choice, there yeah. has got to be bad, just based it's on geography. Oh, okay. Well, because of the, the, um, the uh, what's the fucking the Gulf ocean? Stream? The Gulf Stream goes okay. right up through between it, Ireland oh, so and... Between uh, the narrow channel of Wales and Ireland and ah, it hits squarely on Douglas. Those yeah. cunning <laughs> Manx men with their channel. Right. Mm. It's as much better weather than the equivalent other side of the country on like the North Sea coast. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, it with a it with the peculiar meteorological conditions created <laughs> by the ocean currents known as the Gulf Stream yeah. that created Mark Cavendish's thighs. And yes. that's what enabled him to sprint on a bicycle at fifty mile an hour. And he had uh, you know the two of the legs on the flag are his now. <laughs> yeah. The two as really a, chunky a, legs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to Instead her, of the suit him. of armor there in like lycra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Three lycra legs on a flag. Or something. <laughs> Just that like should be his personal logo, the logo, surely. If he yeah. ever does that sportsman thing of becoming ennobled, yeah, Ooh, then yeah. his like crest should absolutely be like three lycra clad legs. Yeah, that, maybe think. spelling out the M and C of his initials or something. Yeah, a yeah, designer yeah. could do that. Bicycle wheel, sort of behind it. That would be good. Yeah. So uh, you're looking up weird Isle of Man facts. Yeah. Well, I just I like thinking about the. I never think about the Isle of Man. Well, it's time to start, really. <laughs> yeah. It's never yeah, too yeah. late. Yeah. Get also, on it. <laughs> well, it's so the um, just the, the the wealthy. There are two billionaires in the Isle of Man. Yeah. Um, mm. The one is the, well, the guy who invented the ball kicker. Yeah, I'm yeah, the guy so who designed the flag. No, he is. <laughs> well, there's, the, there's the descendant of the ball kicker yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, right. he's, well, he, they've fallen on hard times and sort of ended up marrying sort of wealthy social yeah. climbers. Yeah, they had to sell off ball kick manor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, 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 to, a, to a dominatrix. The, the, the Mark <laughs> yeah. 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 To a wealthy so dominatrix. The, yeah. It comforted us to feel there was still ball kicking going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in a way. Well, of course, my great grandfather could never have imagined that his device. <laughs> will bring joy to so many strange men. That's it, yeah. Mm. Uh, whatever, I was... Um... Joy, I presume. My, my grandfather was only familiar with CBT as uh, cognitive behavioural therapy. But... <laughs> the <laughs> least likely thing for a northern grandfather <laughs> to be familiar with. Cognitive behavioural <laughs> therapy. therapy. For CBT, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of people had worked down the mines. You know, they'd seen terrible things. They'd seen friends crashed under under lumps of coal and such <laughs> the like. So many of them needed some kind of group therapy. You know, Mindfulness. But, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they couldn't afford to be talking to therapists for hours and night. Well, CBT was what you got. You got, you got a few methods for coping mechanisms and the like and then you moved on oh, miners are always into mindfulness and stuff like that they were, they yeah. were so in the moment down That's there <laughs> <laughs> they're so grateful yeah. they're so mindful <laughs> yeah, yeah let's see, so you always had your you had your canary and then you had your group better help subscription yes. Yes. Yeah. But, but better help of course they came on paper back then Yes, 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 a, yes. Yeah, there yeah. should have been another animal that, that would get sad before the men in the mine <laughs> so they could tell when the mental health <laughs> was in a yeah. Or, yeah, a raccoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> a droopy dog. Yeah. 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 The dog oh. comes out looking dejected and you're like, uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. He's, sort of, he's not dead, but he's, he's suffering from... He's, yeah. he's listless. <laughs> yeah. We need to get, these, listless. Listless. Yeah, we need yeah. to get mm. these guys around a table and talk about their feelings. Why, sir, the mood in the mine is sure to be melancholy. <laughs> the melancholy collie has yeah, emerged the, from the mine. That, the, the dog is smiling, but not in his eyes. Yeah. Is there man. anything that you would say triggers you? Yeah, it's being underground, doing terrible work for not that much money. <laughs> being in fear of my life. Yeah. 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 My lungs filling up with terrible tars. And, yeah. Yeah. Fe- feeling like I'm working in my own grave, I would say. Is and, my... What's that about? Well, again, I must come back yeah, to yeah. the sort of uh, terrible danger and fear. The really. physical reality mm. of where <laughs> <Yeah>. I am. <laughs> well, yeah. Can we unpack that? Well, we don't need to. No, I, I, it's just a fucking awful job and it's for the rest of my life. There's no way I can get any more <laughs> beyond the physical risk of this job. I see. Yes, I think we're done in that case. Yeah, well, Oh, you should probably not go down that tunnel again. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not speaking metaphorically. Yeah. Shouldn't go down that dangerous, dangerous tunnel. Don't go down that tunnel. No. Yeah. It's, it's, uh... Look, the dog is the dog is weeping. You can't be in there. The dog the mental health is terrible. The dog has started to rewatch the US office. This can't be good. This is one of yeah. the most dangerous minds <laughs> yeah. we've ever worked in. Yeah. And he watches the credits every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the full theme tune. Yeah. 
yeah. staring through the TV. Did people mention new shows. He's not interested. <laughs> yeah, the dog, he the says dog. he's adding them to a list. But he's not, <laughs> the yeah. dog's not watching. The dog's them. posted an Instagram story. He's having cereal for dinner. Oh dear. <laughs> we better get those men out of the mine straight away. Pump, pump yes. the Prozac in. The Prozac yeah. gas. <laughs> the, dog. the dog's doing a cryptic Facebook post about finding out who your real friends yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So you've got to evacuate this mine immediately. And he's openly refreshing the page to see how many people have liked it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the, the dog has has bought and then had refunded under his rights in a 24-hour cooling-off period return tickets to Italy for an Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> the dog has started... <laughs> eat, Pray, Love in Italy is very uh-huh. funny. Like the most exotic country I could think of, Italy. It starts, Italy. I must it learn it there. Oh, I, I thought yeah, it was like an Indian thing. Is in Italy. No, it's Eats in Italy. Oh, okay. And then Pray's in India, and I don't know where Love is. <laughs> Not going to eat any of that Indian food. It doesn't agree with me. I'll start <laughs> off. I'll do the Eat bit in Italy. Yeah. Uh, love is in Belfast. <laughs> they eat in uh, Italy street. Street. Right, yeah, it's a Are you sure you're in, in the right pub, love? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've done the eat and the prey Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Walking, My photos of India Having a photo taken in your sort of Kind of uh, uh, um, Appropriated sari outside a UDF uh, Mural yeah, I mean to be fair, you could do the prey in Belfast Just be careful about which length Lord's Prey You're using in yeah. which church Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you the Wikipedia the like the first paragraph on I Wikipedia this, yeah. Yeah. of the current uh, vice <laughs> vice president of uh, of Suriname, Ronnie Brunswick or Brunswick. Um, it, like it's it's Dutch. Oh, um, if you heard them say it, it would Brunswijk. be almost it'd be so Brunswijk. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Uh, is, is a, it W I J K? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. a Vike situation, they, they, probably. Yeah. It's a Vike. Vike. Is a Surinamese politician, businessman, former rebel leader, footballer, and convicted drug trafficker who is mm. serving as the current vice president of Suriname. Nice. Yeah, pretty solid CV for a vice president South of American, a country we don't really know about. Powerfully South American. Apparently, well, properly, yeah. While like recently playing for the team that he owns, he was found. <laughs> he, he was found by the uh, by the referee to just be openly bribing members of the other team, just like walking around the pitch and <laughs> handing out handfuls of cash. 